So we're coming back here, um, to back to what we, what I was talking about earlier, about is about Israel, um, basically what they have done, what they have done, that made God to restrain His hand from them, and made the people of the people of Israel to lose the battle that they should have won. There was something that prevented them from winning the battle, as we read in um previous chapters and my other podcast I was talking about how the house of Eli one of one of which one of many sins in Israel but the house of Eli was to be judged by God so basically now I want us to um I want us to go um and look at what what was what was making these people to sin and I want us to go to and if you if you go into later chapters, First Samuel, chapter seven, um, beginning with verse three again, um, yeah, let's go to verse three. Verse three says that Samuel spake to the house of Israel, saying that if you do return to the Lord with your hearts, and then put away the strange gods and the Asherahs from among you. And prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only. He will deliver you from the hands of the Philistines. This is in this is in later chapters in verse um first Samuel chapter chapter seven. Where we go back here to verse now that we have a clear understanding. But we still have to understand how ignorant the Israelites who were acting. You see how they said that why hasn't the Lord why hasn't the Lord smitten us today before the Philistines? Basically it's because of the sins that they have committed. The sins that they have committed prevented them from winning the battle. Their idolatry, their sins, which were many, made them to lose the battle and made all of their all of their well trained soldiers to be killed. And they, and this thing is this, they, their lack of reasoning, <laughs> this is what they, this is what they say afterwards. Instead of them, basically, instead of them to, to come to God and say, Lord, what have we done that you did not allow us to win this war? This is what they say after that. Let us fetch the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us that that when it comes among us, it may save us out of the hands of our enemies. So look at, so look at, so look at, so look at what they're. This is this is this is what they're trying to say. They're saying, "Why has God made us lose today?" And they come up with their reasoning, saying instead of them to say, instead of them to repent, instead of them to say, "Oh Lord, oh." oh um, maybe, maybe because what we've done, or maybe to reason with their minds, their lack of reasoning, they just say, oh, you know what, let's just fret the Ark of the Covenant. So basically they're saying that the Ark of the Covenant is like a new representation of God. They want, they want to force the hand of God because now it's like, oh, we lost. You know what, we're going to bring the Ark of the Covenant and we're going to make sure that we win this time. So basically they're forcing the hand of God to make them win. When to their, when they don't, when they still without knowledge, and this is it just brings me back to that verse in the Bible that says that my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. They are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Instead of them to reason with themselves and understand why they lost the battle, they they want to force God's hand of they want to force God's hand and make them victorious, which is going to make them. Even worse now because now they they um now that they have committed all these sins they think that oh they can still win battles win 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 battles today but yet their sin is still before them they're still is still on their foreheads they still commit idolatry they still commit sin but they say you know what let's fresh start the covenant that it will save us out of their hands. Of our enemies. I want you to think about that. I really want you to think about that. Why? 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 
why would they um why would they just say something that they know they they know themselves they know that their sin they are sinning against God they want to force God's hand of victory when their own sin is upon their head see what they're expressing is this basically they expected to win they expected that they won victory on that day because they, they because they have seen the victory that happened in the days of Samson they expected that they wanted to become victorious but now when they see now that they have that they, that now that they have they have lost that they fail this is what they say let's fetch the covenant of God let's fetch the the covenant of Jehovah So now this is like, so basically what they're saying is, this is what they're saying. <laughs> they need, they, it's like, it's like, tell us, it's like, they want good luck now. They want, they want luck, they want charm now. They want, they want to win the battle. So they're bringing the Ark of the Covenant now. It's like, it's like, you know, some people when they want to like do something or perform something, you know, sometimes they bring something with them as a good luck charm or like a good luck or a charm to make sure that they do good in whatever they want to do. So basically going back here, this is what they're trying to do. Basically, they're bringing the Ark of the Covenant, you know, they're bringing the Ark of the Covenant as a good luck charm. <laughs> wow. So they're basically bringing this. They're basically, they basically want God to be as their lucky charm. They want to bring God as their good luck charm so that they can win this battle. They want to compel the hand of God so that they can win this battle. Wow. And you know what's so funny? I just it, it just really I just wanna I just wanna go back. I just wanna um actually let's just keep going now because it, it, it just gets interesting. So when the people, so we're gonna continue with verse four. So the people sent, the people sent to Shiloh, and they may bring that they may bring hand to the ark of the, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts, which dwelt between the cherubims. And watch this: <laughs> the two sons of Eli, Hafni and Phineas, were were there with the ark of the covenant of God. I want you to just pause and think about this. <laughs> As I said earlier in my other podcast, those two sons that they sinned against God, they are now with now. They brought now they have sinned against God. Basically, they think that now they even sin. This is this is a huge sin now because they bring the Ark of the Covenant as a as a charm now, as a lucky as a good luck charm for them to win. And now even worse than that, this is what they do. They make sure that half nine finesse are with the Ark of the Covenant. I don't know now. I don't know if they're holding the Ark of the Covenant or they're just standing right next to the Ark of the Covenant. But, but basically, God could have just struck them. God could have just struck them down right there. God could have just struck down Hafna and Phineas right where they are, the Ark of the Covenant. God could have just struck them down. I was even saying to myself, I was reading this before. But God could have just struck them down. Why couldn't he, now we're gonna you're gonna you're gonna see how they die? But basically here, this guy could have just struck them down of being even near the ark of the covenant of God. But God allows. But God does something. God does something that we think, oh, it should have ended right there. But God's like, no, it continues. <laughs> it continues. When the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout, and the earth rang. And the Philistines, now I want you to notice, I want you to notice, I want you to notice what I'm going to read hereafter. When the Philistines noticed the shout, they said, What mean is the noise of the great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? 
and understand and and they and they understand that the ark of the of the Lord was coming to the camp. So basically, now they're trembling. And the Philistines are trembling. I want to I want to skip. I know it is. It says here, "Woe unto us who has delivered us from the hands of these mighty gods, these gods that have smote the Egyptians with all plagues and in, in the wilderness." Now look what he, now look what the Philistines says here. Be strong and quit yourselves like men, O ye Philistines. Ye are not servants, then ye are not servants unto the Hebrews, as they have been to you. Quit yourselves like men and fight. The Philistines fought, and the Israelites were smitten, and they fled every man into his tent, and there was a very great slaughter. For there fell on the Israelites thirty thousand footmen. And the ark of God was taken. Look what happened. The two sons of Eli, Hafna and Phinehas, were slain. And there ran a man out of um, Benjamin, out of the army, and they came into Shiloh the same day, with his clothes rent, and the earth, and with his earth upon his head. Basically, he put dirt upon his head. And it came low, Eli sat upon his seat at the wayside, watching, and his heart trembled for the ark of, the ark of God. And the men came into the city, and they told him, and they, and they told it, and the city cried out. And Eli heard the noise of the crying, and he said, what means, what means the noise of this tumult? And the man came in haste and told Eli, Eli was 98 years old, and his eyes were dim, he could not see. The man said to Eli, I am he that came out to the army. And I fled this day out of the army, and he said, What is there done what is there done, my son? The messenger said to that said, Israel has fled before the Philistine, and there has been a great slaughter among the people, and thy two sons also, have not and Phineas, are dead. And God and the ark of God is taken. It came to pass when he mentioned the ark of God that it fell back from his he fell off his seat backwards by the side of the gate and his neck and his neck break and he died for he was an old man he was heavy and he was and he judged Israel 40 years I'm 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 really explain what this whole thing is going on and his daughter Phineas wife who was with child near to be delivered when she heard the tidings of the ark of the Lord was taken and their father-in-law who was dead she bowed her head and travailed, for her pain came upon her. And about the time of her death, the woman stood by her and said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast born a son. And she answered not, neither, she did, neither did she regard it. She named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory has departed from Israel, because of the ark of God was taken because of her father-in-law and her husband. She said, the glory from Israel, the glory has departed from Israel, and the ark of God has been taken. So, um, I want us to dive in into all this, because this is a lot, this is like deep stuff right here. So, I want us to like really, really dive into all of this right now. So basically, <laughs> so Israel brought their, you know, their good luck charm to battle. They brought the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> I can tell you what, though. God wasn't really going to be, God really knew that they were not going to win. Because basically, they not repented. They did not say, what have we done to lose this? They said, why did God, basically, that's, this is what they told God. Why have you made us defeat? Why did you make us defeat? They're not saying, Oh Lord, what have we done? What have we done to lose this battle? They said, why have you made us defeat this battle? Wow. Now I want to do, um, really, um, Go deeper into what this whole passage is trying to really tell us. <laughs>